left leg hook in. Tanya, now she does. Gina should go for that choke. Is that what you're going to survive? Oh, it's over! Gina Carano submits Tanya Avenger! Wow, I am impressed! This show was supposed to be last week, and I couldn't do it, and thankfully, everyone decided they were okay with putting it off a week, because I had no voice at all then. Um, yeah. And so, uh, of all things to happen, the day before you're coming back on, Cameron, Gina sues Disney. <sighs> So Gina is suing Disney, and then I saw that happening, and then of course on your Patreon, so the, his link to the Patreon is, is uh, pinned to the chat. Yep. Um, so check you. it out. Been a member for over a year, and so right away, like there's oh, you update constantly, so you had the Gina story, but then you also had way more of a story that, yeah. you're, that you've heard could be happening. Would you mind sort of ex expanding on that for people? Sure, and so we all look, let's say with what, first I kind of say with what's publicly known, what is publicly known is Gina Carano officially sued, uh, you know, uh, yesterday she put it on her Twitter, you know, there's a, there's a major Washington law firm that's a big shot Washington law firm that does actually like Supreme Court cases that's taking on her case, right? Uh, and yeah, sliding into her DMs. That's why I was like, oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if I blew my I blew my chances there developing a friendship with her by, by that weird DM, who knows, but whatever. So, 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 you know, so Gina put this out there and, you know, in her tweet, she indicated that Elon Musk appears to be backing her and that's all in response to back in August, right? Uh, that in August, uh, Elon Musk had put out a tweet saying anybody who has been fired because they posted on Twitter, I mean, I'm not going to call it X, posted on Twitter, right? Posted on Twitter, you know, please contact my people or me and we'll back your lawsuit. And he just put it out there. And then Gina responded at the time quite famously, does that include me? I think I have a case, right? And so then we didn't hear anything more about that. A lot of people, oh, Gina, you got to do it. Then we didn't hear anything, right? Till August. And, you know, and, you know, and I posted other stuff in those upcoming months uh, prior to this where, uh, because I have certain contacts, I have Lucasfilm. Not everyone believes that I do, and it's up to you to believe it or not. I'm just going to present you my story, mm -hmm. and you decide whether this guy is credible. I'm just going to tell it to you, and you believe it or not. I just don't care, right? Sorry. So my contacts inside of Lucasfilm uh, told me by the end of the year, um, you know, that uh, John Favreau really wanted Gina back, you know, uh, for the Mandalorian, and that you know he was doing his best to reach out to her people. Uh, they told me the extent of those conversations. I don't feel comfortable revealing that. That's that's a little too private. But they told me the extent yeah. of what those conversations were. But the idea was that you know that Favreau really wanted her back and was do, trying everything possible. How can we make this easy for you? And you know the ball was in her court. And then suddenly you know we see this the, we see this we see this lawsuit. Now before I talk about what other sort of unusual things my insiders then revealed to me because obviously when this came out i reached out to my contacts and said what do you know about what's going on they're like oh we got a story to tell you so i'll tell you that story in a second right but just setting that aside right uh, setting that aside what we have is um you know a situation where this is unusual you know for most people like you look at the people supporting gina and i also sent her a, a supportive message right saying good for you i hope you get what you want out of this right all of that uh, most people are like, yeah, knock them down, uh, take them to the cleaners, right? The reality is Gina didn't do this for the last several years. She could have done this a couple of years ago, right? Uh, you know, you know, mm -hmm. God bless her. She has some resources. It's not like she couldn't afford a law firm. She can't, right? right? Yes, uh, can. And uh, I mean, Gina, bless her. She's a successful woman, right? And she has financial resources. So it's not like she needed Elon Musk to support her financially. I don't think she needs that, right? So there's some reason why she chose to do it now. Um, and also it's... Uh, if you ever anyone sues a movie studio as an actor, and she's not background. I mean, she was a she was you know a pretty high up there on the call sheet actress for that show, Mandalorian, right? And she yep. starred in real yep. movies with like Steven Soderbergh directing. I mean, this is a woman that was establishing a very real acting career yes. at a high yep. level, right? Not not a, not at like I'm trying to break in as an extra. I mean, she was yep. a real principal player, and so it is unusual for someone of that background, right, to sue. Because normally that is the kiss of death in Hollywood. Normally, when you sue a studio, you are forever blacklisted by all the studios because now you've shown that you're a troublemaker. So nobody ever wants to work with you. So in general, it is very rare for major players to sue. There are a few notable instances that are exceptions. One of them was uh, Peter Jackson sued New Line Cinema. Uh, after the Lord of the Rings, because he had a profit participation claim on that. And so he was probably he claimed he was owed something like 50 or 60 million dollars based on the billion dollar profit, right? Uh, and 
they claim that they, of course, their accountant, studio accountant said, no, we made no money on this. So Lord of the Rings was a loss. I mean, that all studio movies are lost. That's how the accountants budge the numbers to make it that way for tax purposes. Right. And said, no, I'm not going to accept that. And, you know, being Peter Jackson, you know, they unwisely decided to fight him on this. He said, okay, if you're going to do this, I'll sue you. And he won. And he ended up getting settled out probably 50 to $100 million, right? And that's a rare case. And that's also unwise on the part of New Line because what normally I'm sure Peter's people did was they reached out and said, can we resolve this? Because this isn't fair, what you're doing. I'm sure those conversations were had, but guess when you're talking about 50 to $100 million, somebody decided, you know, screw them, right? It's too much money, and maybe we can we, maybe we can uh, get them to settle out for 10 or something, right? Uh, it, it didn't play out that way. So some idiot decided to fight this and lost. Um, yeah. But it's generally not a good idea. Uh, and, you know, I'll talk at some point today about the other strange exception, which proved not to be the exception, where Scarlett Johansson uh, sued uh, Disney under Bob Chapek. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, over how uh, Black Widow was distributed, right? Um, so, but even at the time when that happened, for those who were members of my Patreon, go, want to go back and read the earlier things, I wrote, "This is bizarre. Scarlett Johansson doesn't need to sue. This is something that she can make one phone call, or her agent can make one phone call and say, you don't want Scarlett Johansson, a list star, suing. It looks bad for everybody, right? Let's give her the money." And you know, and that suit went ahead, but was also immediately settled within within just three or four weeks, right? To give her exactly what she wanted. And at the time, I said, "This is such a bizarre thing because stars don't sue; they handle everything behind closed doors. Uh, that's how this industry works." So for her to sue, there has to be a reason. And I theorized at the time that this was actually a fake out; that the, she sued because Bob Chapek wanted her to. He even asked her to. I opined. I'm just be, opinion. No one told me this, but I felt yeah. it. I said intuitively felt that. Of course, the head of CA, her agent, the one of the most powerful agents in Hollywood, called Bob and said, "Yeah, man, she feels she's owed another twenty million bucks, and she didn't get it in the way you distributed it, right?" Normally, oh, okay, well, let's call accountant, give her a check for twenty million. But I think Bob said, uh, "Yeah, I will do that." But you know what? Let's do this right now. You know who's a problem for me right now is Kevin Feige because Kevin Feige, the Marvel president, was openly, aggressively, publicly attacking Bob Chapek at the time. And saying that I don't like your strategies, I don't like how you're doing. You know, you're putting because it was during the lockdowns, and you know, he he put out Black Widow simultaneously, I believe, as well as putting in the theaters, as well as streaming. Yeah. And and you know, again, unwisely, you had you know Kevin Feige publicly saying in the trades, the boss is wrong. He's screwing my uh, my movies. He should be putting them out only in theater and not in streaming. And so this is an problem when you have the president of one of your studio head and one of your underlings, a, pr a president of a subdivision, is publicly criticizing you. So you need to get that guy under control. And so I said, what I would do if I were Bob Chapek would, I would then say, okay, let's give him what he wants. The next movie, Shang-Chi, we're just going to distribute it theatrically. We're not going to do any streaming until the movie's been out, right? Which is what he wanted to do with Black Widow. And we're going to prove that he's wrong. And we're going to prove it in such a way it's going to shut him down. And the way you do it is you let Scarlett Johansson sue with an mm. understanding behind closed doors. This is just a pro forma lawsuit. We all know I'm going to give you the money. Don't worry about that. I just need to teach Kevin a lesson. So, you know, uh, two months into this lawsuit, they release Shang-Chi under the pressure of the lawsuit saying, well, the, we're being sued for doing it this way. You're right, Kevin. We're going to put it out the way you want. And Shang-Chi was released only theatrically, and it did substantially worse than Black Widow. Right. It turns out that that strategy worked. Black Widow got yeah. more money from doing a dual release. Right. Uh, and yes. had Shang-Chi done that, maybe it would have gotten the same. So the day I, when those numbers came out, I wrote on my Patreon, the strategy has been fulfilled. They're going to settle this immediately because now Kevin Feige looks like a jerk off. He looks like, you know, he got what he wanted and now he yeah. failed. And so I said, they're going to settle this immediately. If you go back and look at my Patreon, I said that 24 hours later, they settle it. Right. And they give her exactly what she asked for. Right. And so I was like, oh, that was the game. It was a game. And the only person that came out of it looking stupid because immediately they put out press releases praising Scarlett Johansson. We love her. We got another movie for her. So this was a game. They weren't angry with Scarlett. They want they don't want to alienate Scarlett Johansson. And right. so they gave her the money. And the only person that looked like a jackass was Kevin Feige, who then even made an interview shortly after saying, I kind of underestimated Bob Chapek. And, you know, it was a bizarre thing for him to say. But obviously he be he realized he had been manipulated. Right. Uh, and so bringing that back to Gina. Again, not talking yet about what was revealed to me, but when Gina sues, it doesn't make sense. There's a reason Gina has not sued for two years, right? There's right. a reason. I'm sure, I mean, sadly, she lost her agent and her attorney, so she lost her entire representation. So this horrible thing that was done to her destroyed her physical representation in Hollywood. The only work she could get was with this Daily Wire thing, and 
I'll be honest with you, you know, she's bit better than that movie, right? And she's better than The Daily Wire. Yes. I have some yeah, yeah. strong opinions about Ben Shapiro and Daily Wire and its caliber, and she's better than that. Yes. And she deserves to be in mainstream stuff that's universal, right? That's not necessarily yep. political, whatever. So she deserves that. And But that's all she was getting. So she could have sued any time during this time because she was damaged. Her career yep. was stopped in Hollywood. But she didn't do it because I would think, and again, I'm, I, forgive me, Gina, if you're watching this. I don't want to speak for you. I'm just think, talking theoretically, right? You know, I'm just talking theoretically. Here. If I were you're in, a, in a position similar to yours, I would hesitate to sue because that's going to make the fire worse. It's going to make the fire bigger, and I'll never work in this town. Even if the political climate changes in two or three years, I'm going to be done because I'll be known as the person that sued a, sued a uh, movie studio, and no one's going to trust me after that. Right. So I would hesitate. Yet, and she did not sue for two years. And suddenly, and then she didn't sue in August when Elon Musk offered. In February, suddenly she puts it out one day before the earnings call, right? Okay. So, yeah. so that's in and of itself interesting. What's also interesting, again, publicly, what she's asking for in her lawsuit, she's asking for being recast, which kind of suggests, you know, give me my job back, right? right. Recast me as Cara Dune, or, you know, maybe, maybe get, give me another job. But I think her intention is clear from that lawsuit. She wants to go back to being Cara Dune, which is a, a role she was good at. The fans loved her. People bought her toys, you know. So everybody wants her back as Cara Dune, except for some political ideologues, yep. right? Who, you know, and so, so I think she's asked for that. And, you know, and from what I can tell from the lawsuit, she's, she's also being very honorable. She's not asking for a hundred million. This, in, no. in, you know, you know, in America, amount. exactly. In America, everybody asks for give me a hundred million dollars. Right. You screwed me forever. She's asked for like seventy five thousand bucks, which is directly yep. like you owed me the unpaid elements from my contract that right. you didn't pay me. So yes. now think about this. This lawsuit is going to cost more than seventy five thousand dollars within two weeks for both parties. Right. You know, yep. Disney's going to even defend even getting their internal lawyers dealing with it. The Disney's going to be spending a few hundred thousand dollars to deal with a seventy five thousand dollar claim. Right. Uh, and, and so it's it's just very strange. Uh, and so I will at face value. Now, this is what I will say when I then talk to my insiders within Lucasfilm, they said and they I want to make this clear. They said the information we're about to give you, Gina is not privy to any of this. She is in good faith attempting to get her rights. She wants right. her job back. She wants to be paid back. She wants to close the book on this. And to return to Star Wars and just the returning to Star Wars, people said, well, you know, if if they settle it out and give it to her, will she she'll have lost the principle? No, the principle is she wants her job back. That's the victory. That's the defeat of everyone that took something away from her. She whether they give it to her at the end of a three year legal fight or they give it to her, you know, three weeks from now as a settlement. She just wants her job back. That, and she, that's all she's trying to do is to get her life and her career back to normal. Yeah. And so she's not involved in any of these machinations that I'm about to describe. All right? All right. So with that, now I'll get into what I was told. And again, you take it at face value. You know, I can't confirm it because I was sitting, sitting in these rooms when these conversations uh, happened or are supposed to happen. So I can't say this is my firsthand knowledge. This is secondhand knowledge by people I know inside the company who I trust who have been pretty good about it. Right? Um, and so... And then you can decide whether a guy who's a publicly known screenwriter for 23 years benefits from making up stories like this. Because there are people that claim that there are people that won't believe the insights I've been getting from Lucasfilm for their own agendas. They they don't like what I'm saying, and they've called me publicly a liar. Believe what you want. If I want to put my face and name out there and my 23 year career as a screenwriter to make stuff up, it's up to you to believe if that's a probable circumstance. Believe what you want. So I'll tell you the story. Okay. And then and then we'll we'll, we'll d- make me smaller and bring everybody back. So I'll just tell you very quickly. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and we'll see some of these chats when we come back, right? Yeah. So uh, so it's what my contact, who I poetically call Sparrow, all right, somebody I've met, I know is a real person. I know who, who they are within the company. And amazingly, they've survived a lot of efforts to identify who they are because some of the stuff they've revealed has caused problems in times of the company when it gets out, right? And, you know, there have been investigations. Thankfully, they've survived them so far. Uh, but, yeah, so Sparrow told me, um, all right, so this is what's happening here. The broader game in which Gina is not involved is that there is a strategy happening here with John Favreau and Iger and everybody else. John Favreau has one agenda. He wants her back. It's as simple as that. He he likes her. He didn't want her fired. You know, we know that, you know, we've heard that from a lot of sources that he was upset when she was fired, right? You know, he's never come out against yep. her and he wants her back. And he created Cara Dune for her. 
She was yeah. at the height of her thing when it was taken away from her, and he lost his Rangers of the New Republic. None of it's benefit John. Um, and now he's at a double whammy because, God bless him, Carl Weathers passed away a few days ago. May God grant him eternal yeah. life. I mean, so from what my source, who has read at least the early drafts of the Mandalorian movie, now it's being changed because circumstances are forcing the script to be rewritten a bit because Carl Weathers was not a surprise. Carl Weathers, who's important to the Mandalorian show, was important to this movie. And now he's no longer there. And so on a practical level, John is devastated by Weathers' is passing. And I got that directly from my sources. Like people inside Lucasfilm are sobbing. I mean, they're getting grief counselors. This was very hard for them. Carl Weathers was beloved inside of Lucasfilm and John considered him a personal friend. So he's emotionally devastated. It's only a few days ago. And now he's also practically devastated because he just went to all this drama of getting this movie, the first movie since the stupid Rise of Skywalker movie to be theatrically released, right? And whether it's an important part of the movie, he's gone, right? You know, Grief Karga is gone. So who would be the most obvious person to replace an action hero like him in those scenes? It would be Cara Dune, right? right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you... I mean, you, if you if there's got to be scenes where Mando has to, you know what Grief Cargo was. He's out there gunning down these guys. That's the stuff. He's a he's the muscle guy, right? Yep. That's what you're going to see. And who else could play that is Kara, right? She, she comes could. in and she could bring her right into the scenes that Carl was supposed to do. And she shoots the bad guys. Great, yep. right? Easy transition. Sold. 